All right, welcome to the CSU application tutorial video. All right, we are going to start at CSU Apply. This is what the website looks like. You're going to go down and go make sure you select Fall 2024 as the um, term you are applying for. So if you don't have an account already, here's where you're going to create an account. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. And this is what the application looks like. So here are the four parts of your application that you're going to fill out. And I'll take you there step by step. This is where you add schools that you want to uh, apply to. So this is what it's going to ask for you, you to do first. Um, and you can see they have all of the majors of all of the CSU schools. So say you wanted to search up San Diego State. So I would type in San Diego. And now it should pop up with all of the um, majors that San Diego State has to offer. So I'll just pick one. I'll pick biology. Uh, all right. I'm going to add that as a program. Okay. There's a lot on here. So make sure you go through, really look at the ones that are offered. All right. So now we're going to go to your application. We're going to start in personal information. So a lot of these questions are all um, information that you only can answer. Um, so you're going to authorize that the, you know, the information you're about to provide is as accurate as possible. You're going to decide whether you want to release your um, state testing that you took last year. This isn't going to be used for um, admissions purposes. This is just going to be used for placement and things like that. All right, and now you're going to check the box that basically says that you, this application can go out to the UC camp or the CSU campuses. Save and continue. And then the next section is biographical information. So you're gonna put any of your, you know, your first name, your last name. If you had um, a different name that you used to like legally go by, um, and you legally change it to be something else, you'll click yes and insert your other name. Um, if there's a different name that you want them to call you, then you know you would choose that. Then here's where you get to check your legal sex. So whatever your legal sex is, you're gonna put that. And then you could decide, um, you know, what is your sexual orientation. And then there's, um, you know, a place to describe your gender identity. Um, and then whether you're gen gender conforming. And there, all, in all of these, there is the um, none of the above or decline to state if you'd rather do that. So then you're going to put in your birthday. You're going to put in, um, you know, the country you're born in, state county, uh, wherever you were born. And then um, you're going to answer these questions. So make sure you read all of these and answer them correctly. And then you press save and continue. So I'm putting a lot of random answers, not putting my real address or anything like that. <laughs> uh, so here's where you put, you know, your, your home address. Um, and then if they're, if you're planning on moving soon and you want to provide a different address, um, then you're going to, you know, put when this address will be valid by, um, and then you could put your phone number and then your email and then you can go to the next section. All right. So you're going to, you know, describe your citizenship. Uh, and then if you're born in the United States, you're going to, you know, say which, where you were born, which country you're born in. And then here's the big one. Do you claim California residency? Yes. You want to be um, eligible for California residents. So go ahead and click yes on that one. Have you lived in California continuously since birth? Um, so if you hit, have no, then um, you could, you know, discuss when you started living in California. If yes, then just click yes. All right, so here is a type, uh, the time when you can, you know, describe your ethnicity, um, whether you consider yourself Hispanic or Latino, and then, you know, describe what that looks like for you, what um, ethnicity you are, and then race, you know, you could check as many boxes of these as apply to you. Um, and then 
yes, in summary, what would you describe your race to be? And that's just used for demographic information that's not used for, um, for admissions decisions. Now you're gonna describe, um, give some information on your parents, um, your parent or guardian, so your, their first name, last name, their relationship to you, um, and then whether they are, have been living, um, whether they're a California resident, and then information, including their phone number. Um, and then do you authorize, um, you know, do you give permission that the admissions offices can communicate with your parent or guardian, um, you know, during the application process? And then, um, you know, do you give that right to be like, do you give that um, consent for your parent or guardian to be able to talk to the university or campuses that you're applying to? And then the other information, so if you have a social security number, that's where you'll put it here. If you don't, that's totally okay. Uh, and then down here, you'll put your student, your statewide student ID. Um, and that will be that big long number on the top left-hand side of your transcript. So that's the one you use for all your state testing and all that. Here's where you're gonna put what um, your language is. So if you um, spoke a different language, you know, if you spoke any language um, first, you're gonna put that one there. So like if you spoke English first, Spanish first, whatever language was your first language, go ahead and put it there. And then you can add a second language. Uh, if you, you know, are fluent in French now and English was your first language, you could put that. Um, you know, whatever, whatever languages you speak. And then if your parent or guardian was, um, is a military member, was a military member, you'd indicate that here. And then are you in good academic standing with Helix? So you put, yes, hopefully. Um, and then here are some um, questions regarding, you know, any um, disciplinary measures that might've been taken at your high school. And then down here, if you're interested in getting a teaching credential, you can go, um, you know, and say that you're planning on um, applying to a credential program at a later time. Um, and then maybe what sec like what type of, um, you know, teaching you're thinking about doing. And then if you're interested in being eligible for CalFresh, I'd recommend yes, because CalFresh is a great program. You can get free food. And then the California promise is that are those two um, free years of community college. So I would also click yes for that, um, but it's up to you. And then how did you hear about Cal State? Maybe you heard it from this video. <laughs> All right, so that is that section, the other information section. So the last section in um, this first part of the application is in regards to your financial and parent information. So you're gonna read these. If any of these apply to you, you're gonna click one or more apply to me. If none of these apply to you, you're gonna click none. And then you're gonna say how many people live in your household, including yourself. So make sure you count you as one of those. And then this is um, your parents' ad adjusted gross income for 2022. So this can be found on their tax return. I would go and look at for it then, um, ask them for a little bit of support. Hopefully, if you can um, get a parent or guardian to help you with that, that would be great. And then um, and if you need any help locating that, let us know. And then the untaxed income is usually zero. Untaxed income is income not reported on taxes. Um, so usually that number is zero. If you're interested in campus housing, you could yes. And then you know indicate what uh, level of education your parent or guardian has. And that is it for the first section. So, you know, we're moving and grooving. So that's the personal information section. Now we're looking at um, this section, the academic history section. So that's where you're gonna put in all of your classes that you've taken while in high school and any classes that you took at Grossmont or Queen Maca, um, or another community college if you went there. So you're gonna add Helix High School. So Notice that Helix Charter High School is an option. Um, so just go ahead and type Helix and wait for Helix High School to pop up. Double check it's La Mesa. And you've been here since August 2020 if you started as a freshman. And you'll be here till June 2024. Um, something really, really important to note, we are a semester school. If you put that we are a quarter school, 
you will not get accepted to the colleges that you would like to go to because it will say that you have not met your A through G requirements. So please, please, please make sure that you um, have all of that correct. We are a semester school. Now you're going to say I will, you know, graduate with my diploma and you're expected to receive that in June of 2024. Okay, perfect. So now you're going to go to academic information. Have you ever attended a high school outside of the U.S.? You know, answer that question. Next section. Um, so here's where if you do not see the college's attended section on your, your um, application, that is because when you were creating your account, you didn't um, say that you went to or are going to receive college credit for any classes. So you'll have to go back to your profile, to your extended profile, and change that before this little section will pop up. So go ahead and um, add Grossmont. Um, this is the other you know, time when it's really important to go into your self-service on grossmont.edu and run your unofficial transcript. This will show if any of your classes were at Cuyamaca, um, and it'll show you the details of all of your uh, college classes, including the units and the names of the classes, and this way you can make sure it's all correct. You'll also need that when turning in your application to get checked by us. So make sure you run that unofficial transcript. Um, I'll make another video that, that shows you how to do that, so don't worry about that. So once you've added Grossmont, it's a semester school, um, you are going to go into this next section, which is high school coursework. So this is the time where we are going to add all of the grades we've taken in high school. So let's start. So I'm just going to delete this grade level so we can start from scratch together. Um, so we're going to start with ninth grade. Okay. So remember, make sure that it's a semester helix. You were there from 2020 to 2021. This is a default. So if you add another course, another grade level, it is going to keep that until you change it to 2021 to 2022. So make sure that your freshman year is 2020 to 2021. All right, so now we're going to add some courses. So this is the fancy part where we are going to hopefully be able to do a little dual screen action, bring up a fake transcript, and we can go through it together. All right. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go through freshman year of this um, transcript together. Let me see if I can do that. Sorry, technical difficulties. I just want to make sure you can see this. So we'll put this one up here. And I'll put this one right here. Okay. Okay, let's see. So we have ninth grade. So we're going to start with our first class in ninth grade, which is English 1C, 2C. So what you're going to do is you're going to start typing English, E-N-G, and then look for the 1C comma 2C. Okay? And then we are going to put the first grade was a B. Let's see, right there. And then English 2C is also a B. So for your classes, you'll have two grades for each of your classes, except for classes like ITSS or Algebra 3, but we'll get there. Uh, but for it says fall and spring, I want you to not think of it as fall and spring anymore. I want you to think of it as first grade for fall. Fall is first grade. Spring is second grade. You might be thinking, well, we took English all in fall. That would be correct based on the seasons. But for our purposes here, we're going to look at this as first grade section and the second grade section. Say we didn't get a B in both of these English. It's, we can't just, you know, put in one grade for like, um, you know, we got Bs in both of these, but it's not, it doesn't mean you got, you know, an overall B. We don't do overall grades. You got two overall grades, right? Two separate overall grades. So if this was an A and a B, how would you couldn't like, you know, average that out? If they're two separate grades that you want. So that's how you input a course. Um, so we're going to add another class. So you're going to click the little check mark. 
All right, now we're going to add another class. So now what I want us to do is add algebra, um, college prep algebra. So as you can see, there's algebra review is the first one. We are not going to add that. That is not an A through G course. That's a course that preps you for the real course, which is down below. It is algebra 1C1, comma, 2. So let's add algebra 1. Oops. So we're going to do algebra 1C1, comma, 2. For 1C1, we got an A. And for 1C2, we got an A. So you see that there's an opportunity with pluses, pluses and minuses. And you might say, maybe I'll go into my student view and add my pluses and minuses. Please do not do that. Just go by what's on your, your high school transcript, the actual transcript that you have. Okay? So now let's go in. So I have, you know, fit slash team sports coming up. What happens when I type in fit? Oh, there's no results. That is an indicator that it is not going to go on this application. What I don't want you to do is be like, oh, I don't see it. It's not popping up. Let me just keep typing it, okay? It will not work like that. You are not supposed to put PE in there. You're not supposed to put any courses that aren't popping up in the drop-down menu, okay? So now we're going to go to Earth Science. In Earth Science, we got a B and a P. B, oops, see, can't do plus, B and a P. All right, so you're gonna keep going like that. Um, here's, a, here's a kind of a funky one that I wanna mention. Well, first of all, you have to put Helix first in there, so don't, um, don't forget that. Helix first, and then you're gonna do, this person got a P. An A and a P, okay? An A and a P. And then what you wanna do now for ITSS, you might be thinking, well, I only had ITSS for one semester. And that is okay. So depending on when you had it, um, oops, it doesn't have the acronym, it just has the intro to social science. So this person had it the very last semester of their freshman year. So we're going to do no course for the first semester since we only got one grade. And in the second semester, we are going to put the grade, which was a P. All right. So that's what you're going to do for any classes that you have only one grade for, which there aren't that many. Uh, for example, Algebra 3 is one. So let's add Algebra 3. I know you take it junior year, but just for example, Algebra... All right, and this person see, did not take Algebra 3. Um, but if you took Algebra 3, you would put your grade here, and then you would put no course on the back half, okay? So that's what that looks like. There are sometimes little weird things where if you type in, oh my gosh, for example, algebra, right? So algebra 1H has algebra 1H1, comma 2, but it also has algebra 1H1 slash 1H2. Always put the one with the commas. Commas means you did it in a classroom. The slash means you did it during distance learning. Okay, so make sure that they all have commas. All right, we are going to move on. Keep going and, oh, before we go, um, I wanted to show you the senior year classes. So in your senior year, um, by now, if you're watching this video now, you've already gotten a grade for your first semester. So go ahead and, you know, you're able to put those grades in. Um, but say, you know, there's, um, you're in progress with the second grade. So you're working on that second semester now. <clears throat> for classes that um, you have next, next term, so say you have data science, which has this really kind of funky name, um, but that is the data science class we offer. So you have, you know, all of that starting in January, both of those semesters are planned. Okay, so you have a plan for both of those. And then say you are, um, you know, you have Econ 1C and Poli-Sci 1C next, next semester or next half of the year, right, in January. So 
you'll put, you know, maybe you have econ first. So you put planned for econ 1C, but since you only are going to get one grade for econ 1C, you're going to put no course for the last half. And same for poli sci, but switch it. So poli sci, you'll take second. You're going to do no course for the first grade and then plan for the second grade. So you want to put every single class you're going to take your senior year in this section, except for your college classes, that's going to go in the next section. So make sure you do this or else you will not meet the A through G's at the end. All right, we're going to move on to college coursework. So this is where your college transcript will come in super, super handy. Um, you're going to go in and click, click edit. So make sure this is, these are your gross month classes and you're going to add different courses. So in every one of these courses you add, you're always going to add that you are, your academic status is a freshman. Okay. Um, and then you're going to add your course. So let's add another course. So let's add AOJ and 206 or, oh, that's not my bad. I think that was the one that doesn't appear. Let us do English 120. All right. And if you, like for the AOJ class, if you don't see AOJ 206, just keep, for this one, I know I said last, a little bit earlier in the video, that don't just keep typing it out. But for that one, actually keep typing it out as long as it's above three units. So look at this. I typed in English 120 and already filled out the course title for me. It filled out the number of credits, which is great. All I need to do is put, um, find the find the subject area, which is English, English, and then you're gonna put whatever grade you got. Okay. And this area, because um, Grossmont and Cuyamaca and a lot of the community colleges have pluses and minuses, you are actually um, able to put a plus or a minus for this for the, this section, the college coursework. All right. Perfect. Now is the standardized test section. Uh, oops. Just got to save that. Um, so now we're going to go into the standardized test section. So this is where um, you're able to add any test scores. They are only looking at the test scores for placement placement purposes, not for um, for um, applica application purposes. So they're not going to use it to evaluate your applications. They're going to use it to place you. Okay. And they're not required. So go ahead and add those. And then last but not least, the most important part, in my opinion, is this A through G matching. So in order to be qualified to get into any of these CSU schools, you have to meet all of these requirements. So what's going to happen is when you input all of your grades, it's going to pop up with the number of years you have for those things. So um, as you can see, I'm below the amount of history slash social sciences I should have. I did not input all of the grades into this application, but you should have after getting to this point. So um, feel free to go back in the video, pause it, and then continue to this section if you are still putting in your grades. Um, but after you're done, you're going to land here. Now, you need to make sure that this number matches up with this number. This number can go above and beyond this number, but this number cannot go lower um, or else you will not be qualified. Okay. And you graduate from Helix having completed all the A through G's. So if it's not matching up, it's an error in the way that you put it in your application. Um, most likely not, you know, something that's wrong from your, um, your Helix classes. So what you're going to do is you're going to, Go to the, oops, let me go back. So you're going to go to update A through G courses. If you put any college classes in here, you have to do it manually. Um, so as you can see, here are the A through Gs. So you are going to go through and just double check. Creative writing, B for sure. Econ is, is going to be a G. Political science is going to be an A. Um, and so on. So... You're going to go down here. So you see how the college classes do not have anything in these A through G's. So, which is important because look, this is in English, right? So that's a whole year of English not being represented because we need to manually match it. So English is a B and U.S. Black Perspectives is going to be an A for history. Okay. Save and continue. All right. So once you do that, you will see it reflected here. 
um, and make sure to, you know to totally make sure these match just in case we'll also check it in the review when we review your applications after you submit them to get reviewed okay so this is the part where you're going to do the um, if you want to apply to EOP so EOP is uh, stands for Educational Opportunity Program. This is for students that are underrepresented in higher education. So if you're a first generation student, which means you're the first in your, um, like your parents, neither of your parents completed a four year degree. Um, so you can have, you know, brothers and sisters or cousins that have gone to four year college. But if, you know, your parents didn't, then you're still considered first generation. Um, or if you're low income, things like that. So this is a program that basically helps provide some sort of um, some sort of um, like they have, like assistance for you throughout throughout high school or throughout college. So they'll you know hopefully be able to get you into your classes earlier, give you mentoring opportunities, um, also just like help be a community for you. So they have a lot of fun community events. So here's where you can decide um, whether yes you want to complete the EOP application. Uh, which I highly recommend if you are qualified by these criteria. Uh, and then you'll have to fill some things out and ask a teacher to be your EOP recommender, which on your Zello, I have a survey that you can fill out that will really help your EOP recommender out um, with some of their questions. And you can also save it to later for later. So if you want to do this, I think you have up until January to complete this part. But make sure to say yourself a reminder. I find when a lot of students, you know, save this till later, they kind of forget about it and forget to come back and apply for a program that could really, really help. So um, I'd recommend filling it out or no, if you're not qualified, I'd click no. And then I skipped it, but I'm gonna go back to it. So these are, if you're a part of, if you're a part of any of these community-based um, organizations, Avid, Upward Bound, any of those, you would know if you are. So um, click yes, if so. And then um, if, you know, the number of hours you've worked, and then, you know, the number of hours that you participated in extracurriculars. So just, you know, average it out. All right. So that was that section. You are almost done. I know this application is a little bit easier than some of the others. So next you're going to go, last you're going to go into the program materials. And this is where you will answer questions that are specific to the campuses you're applying to. So this is for CSU Chico. So Chico only has one question. It's whether you are planning on living on campus, off campus, but not with family or with parents or family. OK, so if you want to click on campus, that's the only question you have to answer for Chico. And then uh, for SDSU, it gives you the details and then you're going to go in here. Um, so their questions are, are you a transfer student? You are not a transfer student. You are a first time freshman. And then um, housing inquiry, where will you live? Um, maybe you'll live with parents or family. Okay. And then you're done. So you are going to submit your application to get checked by us. This is very important. Um, and this will help you to be able to have that peace of mind when you're submitting your application. Um, that we'll be able to check it, see if any errors were made. And then once we send it back to you with the edits, you can submit it feeling all good about it. So when you're ready to get your application checked, you go in through all of uh, the application and you finish it to the best of your abilities. You're going to click this download button and that's going to download it as a PDF. You're then going to open up a new tab, go to helixcharter.net. And then you can either go on your grade level team's website or you could go on um, the College and Careers website and it'll pop up with application review Google form. Then you're going to click that and, um, you know, submit the PDF of the CSU application, fill this out. You want to attach your, your Grossmont transcripts um, and then submit it and we'll go ahead and review it, send you an email that it's done. You'll get your little button. Um, it says you've applied to college and that you get to come to I've applied party and yeah so that that's that's it and you're done with the use uh, the CSU application if you have questions about the UC application you can go and watch the other video that outlines the UC videos and the